QuickBooks Online 2023. Enter transaction for owner withdrawal or personal payment using bank feeds. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our bank feeds practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using incognito window or another browser. You can open incognito if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser incognito window type in into the search engine quickbooks online test drive we're going to be using the sample company to compare the accounting view the one bank feeds practice file is in and the business view the one the sample company is in you can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top change the view down below we're now going to be opening a couple tabs duplicating tabs that is as we do every time so we can put reports in them right click in the tab up top to duplicate it and then we're gonna oh there's an error okay i've restarted and now i'm gonna duplicate again and then i'm gonna right click and duplicate again and then i'm gonna go back to the tab to the middle as the one to the right is thinking go to the reports on the left hand side open up one of the faves that being the balance sheet and we can also see on the business view by the way if we take a look at the business view that the reports are located in the business overview and then the reports on the left hand side back to our practice file tab and to the right reports on the left this time the p l the profit and loss the other favorite closing the hamburger up top let's change support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it change that range 010122 to 123122 i'm going to run it to refresh it tab to the middle close up the boogie scroll to the top Change the range 010122 to 0 to 12, 31, 22. Run it to refresh it. That's the setup process we do every time. Let's open up the bank feeds now, which are on the tab to the left. We set up the bank feeds in a prior presentation, of course. They're under the banking if using the accounting view. And then we have our bank feeds up top. If you're on the business view, by the way, the bank feeds are in the bookkeeping and then transactions and then the bank transactions up top okay so now we're going to be thinking about i'm going to close up the ham boogie a uh, transaction where we have a bank feed uh decrease here and the other side is going to be for a personal draw out of the business so we're taking it from the business for personal so let's just give a quick recap on the system how this basically works i'm going to collapse everything to the accounting equation just to think about it, remember that as we put uh, the business together, what's happening is the assets that we have on the balance sheet are only in the business and not for our personal use. They're not in our personal checking account. They're in the business because we expect to use them in order to generate revenue in the future. We hope that the investment of those assets in the business will give a better return than we could get if we just take them out of the business and put it in and investment like stocks and bonds. We're financing those assets in the business either through liabilities, us taking out loans or equity. That's the money that we put into the business and or the money that has been accumulated, earned, retained through the business and not yet been distributed out in the form of the draws if it's a sole proprietorship or uh, dividends if it's a corporation. So now, of course, as the business uh, gets in place, when you start up the business, it's likely that we're going to be investing in equity in order to purchase the property, plants, and equipment we will use for future res revenue generation. But as the business gets going, 
We're hoping that the equity that we accumulate through the income statements, our revenue, our earnings, will generate assets, and yet and, and uh, we can take those assets out of the business for personal use. So as a, as a business starts to be more secure, that of course is the flow that we would kind of expect to happen. How are you gonna set that up in QuickBooks? Ideally, we would like to have a separate set of books, a separate checking account, separate QuickBooks file for QuickBooks business versus the personal. Again, you can imagine a situation if you're a small business, you just have gig work or something, you might use class tracking or tags possibly to break out kind of business and personal in the same file. But ideally we would like to have separate, separate books and we're gonna track the business side of things in part because we wanna do our taxes and stuff and financial reporting, external reporting at the end of the year. We could do our personal reporting in QuickBooks too, works great. I do that, love it, good stuff. But this is gonna be the business side of things. So, uh, Ideally, we would like to set it up so when we take the money out for personal use, we take it out as a draw, meaning I'm gonna see it coming out of the checking account, it's gonna come out of the bank account, and it's gonna be show, It's going to be a draw of some kind that I can see go into the personal account. There's a danger if you're trying to create all of your financial statements with the, the bank feeds that you won't recognize a draw as a draw, but rather you'll see it as an expense and you'll mistakenly put it on the books as an expense instead of a draw. It shouldn't be an expense, it should be decreasing the equity directly. The other side should be going into some form of equity like a draws account here. So, so that's easiest to pick up using the bank feeds if you actually draw the money out whenever using personal stuff. So in other words, you have your business checking account. If you're gonna go on vacation for a personal vacation, you draw the money out of the business checking account, which can clearly be seen as a draw, easily recorded so, even if you're not doing the one doing the bookkeeping, even if you have someone else doing it, or you're doing someone else's bookkeeping, that's how you'd like them to set it up, and then they can spend the money uh, on the personal, and it won't be business related. However, sometimes we mingle things together, accidentally, or we're not as careful as we should be, or whatever, so you might make amounts that are going out of your checking account for personal costs, meaning you went on vacation, like to Disneyland or whatever, and you bought the tickets out of your checking account, which is the business account. What do you do then? Well, you're going to see them come through the bank feeds as an expense for Disneyland. And the question is going to be, well, what do I do? Do I, do I record it as Disneyland travel kind of expense over here? Probably not, unless you can justify it as something for work, you're gonna just record it directly as a draw, right? You could just record that directly as a draw. Now, now you don't like doing that because it's, it's kind of difficult to do that, right? Because now I have, to, I have to weed out the expenses that I made out of my checking account that are personal versus business and put all the personal expenses over here as draws. It's easier, it's more separating the business, it's clearer if you have separate accounts and you drew the money out first and then bought the tickets out of your personal account because then it would be easier on the bookkeeping side of things. But you know, either way, you could, it's not the end of the world if you're able to separate that kind of stuff. Also, if you're using one QuickBooks file for business and personal, it's possible to use class tracking so you can label it as class tracking of draws uh, of personal versus business. And that way you can have an income statement broken out by class and it will show you your income for the business, which is basically all you really need for a small Schedule C type of business uh, because a Schedule C is basically the income statement and you can have your personal side. So you can actually call it travel, personal travel expense or Disneyland expense or whatever you want and you could separate it, it out that way. So those are, those are some options that you can have. Okay, so let's imagine the first scenario. We see a draw coming out. It's just money going from the business account to uh, a personal account, and it's clear, clean. We know that it's going to the owner's personal account. So let's imagine this one here. We have a, like a transfer. Now QuickBooks is trying to record it as a transfer because it sees it as a transfer from one account to the other, but I'm gonna imagine the other account is not a 
a business account. It's the personal account. So I'm not transfer. I'm not going to use a transfer form because that would that would be one if it's going to one business to another business account. So I'm just going to categorize it uh, basically like normal with an expense type of form. It's going to be transaction date. We could put owner or vendor. We we might just put us owner which is a little bit tricky to do because you could be a vendor or in this case, we're kind of like a vendor, but we're not really a vendor or a customer. Like when you put money in, you might be more categorized as a customer. But in any case, I'm going to say that the category is going to be some kind of draws. Now, if I didn't delete all the accounts, they might have like a draws for us. The point is it should be an equity account. So I've got the owner's equity and I've got opening balance equity. So I need to make another one. If you just kept all the file, all the accounts that QuickBooks gives you, it'll probably have like an owner's draw account because they have a billion accounts. But we're going to construct this as we go. So this is a personal draw. It's coming out of the business for personal use. So I want it to be an equity type of account is the point. The other type down here, I'm not as concerned with, but I'm just going to say it's going to be, I'll just call it owner's equity, part of owner's equity. And then over here, I'm going to call it draws. You might call it withdraws or owner's draws or something like that. I'm just going to call it draw. All right. And then, so I already recorded it here. So it would look something like this, right? So then I'm once, once that's in place, I'm not going to put a rule for it or anything. You could put a rule on it if it's a, a standard type of transaction. But the point is when I see the money coming out of the business account to a personal account, that'll be a good indication on my bank feeds that it is a draw. So if I record it and then take a look at my uh, my accounts, I can go into my checking account and I can look for that that uh, 75. There's the draws there. If I go back on up, the other side went into the draws account down below in the equity section. So there that is. Nothing happened to the income statement. That's the point uh, because if it, if it went on the income statement, it would be an, an expense and it would be distorting the activity of the income statement. Now, remember the draws can be a little bit tricky to understand down here because the equity section within the equity section, the net income will automatically roll over by QuickBooks at the end of the year into the owner's equity or retained earnings account. Uh, and that'll happen automatically. So if I changed the dates up to 2023, this amount would roll into here. But the draws do not do that automatically. So uh, in a traditional accounting, you would have to do closing entries. So if you want to close out the draws yearly, you have to do a journal entry to close the draws out into the uh, owner's equity or retained earnings uh, type of account, or let's say owner's equity type of account. If it was dividends for a corporation, you have a similar uh, kind of situation for dividends for a corporation. Otherwise, you're just going to have the draws that will, will not close out. And that's fine too, not a big deal, but it'll just mean that the draws are not there for just the current year. Those are draws that have just been accumulating upward for the life of when you started uh, to account for draws. Now, let's imagine a situation if I go back to the bank feeds where we've got like a, a personal account. Uh, and notice that what QuickBooks is doing here is they're trying to give me like a suggestion with a green item here, even though I didn't create an actual rule, which is uh, clearly indicated by a rule because it's trying to guess what, what I should do with it. So be careful that that's not actually a rule. I suggest trying to make concrete rules instead of just adding the suggestions because then you have more control over the rules and your bookkeeping will likely make more sense. Okay, I'm just gonna pick one, another one of these Primerica ones and I'm just going to pretend, okay, this, let's just pretend that this was for something personal. So we had a personal purchase of something from this particular vendor. And so if I could recognize it as something that I purchased for personal use, then I can say, okay, I don't want to put it to an expense. I want to put it to that draws account. Note how much harder this is to do, especially if you're not the one that, uh, that is doing, like if you're a bookkeeper for somebody else. It's going to be difficult to go through their transactions and say, was this personal or was this business? So you'd like to deal with them as a bookkeeper or accountant and say, hey, look, would you uh, don't do that, right? Anytime that you have a personal thing, try to take the money out first. Otherwise, I don't know where to categorize uh, the personal expenditures. So that's the general. That's what you would like to do ideally. But if there's an expense in here and you can say, OK, that's always a personal thing. 
then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say it's not going to go to an expense account. I'm going to take it directly to the draws account. And you can imagine why that would work. You could say, well, that would be kind of similar to as though whatever this thing that they bought from this vendor would be as if they took the money out with, with a draw and then they purchased it uh, with the personal money out of their personal account. And we just kind of said, well, okay, we're just going to assign whatever they purchased to the draws. Now note that that works from the business side of things if you can pull those out, uh, although it's a little bit more confusing, but it doesn't give you detail in terms of like a personal financial statement because you might want to do your personal financial statements in QuickBooks and be given a personal kind of grouping of your groceries versus your, your, your travel expenses versus so on and so forth. And if you just record things to draws, then hope we're getting the business thing right but we're not really having our personal financials being constructed as we do that. So you could set up like class tracking. So if you turned on class tracking, uh, then you can have an, you could set up your income statement, which, which will have personal and business. But every time you enter a transaction, then you would have to assign it as either personal or business. So it, it can work, you know, for small businesses, sole proprietors, and give you a little bit more detail. Use one QuickBooks file and one checking account to record everything, but it's not usually what people recommend because obviously from an accounting standpoint, we'd like to try to keep everything uh, as separate as possible, but you have that option. So anyways, if I record this, let me show you that, record that. And then if I go into my cog up top, just to show you where those class trackings are, if you go to the account and setting and you go to the advanced tab on the left-hand side, then you've got uh you've got over here your class tracking categories class tracking so if you turn on your class tracking what that will do is is allow you to construct an income statement over here by class and your two classes might be personal versus uh business so that every transaction you assign you either assign it to personal or business class it'll give you two columns then of the income statement personal versus class your total income statement will still in essence remain the same generally so that your balance sheet will still be kind of like the same like a mix of business and personal but if you're just doing gig work or something like that for and you need your income statement for tax preparation purposes which is basically schedule c which is just in essence an income statement then you could think about setting something like that up for your accounting needs otherwise it's going to show up here just like it did before the draws have now uh, uh, increased. So if I go into the draws, we assigned this, even though it wasn't money coming out, we, we paid for something and we assigned it to the draws. So the fact that it went into draws, perfect for the business side of things. But again, you're not tracking what you actually paid for from, a, from an income statement on the personal side of things. So then if I go to my, if I, if I go to my tab to the right, obviously, that expense didn't get recorded over here. It got recorded to draws. If you don't pick those things up, then you're going to end up with categories over here like miscellaneous expense with a bunch of stuff in it or people stuff it into supplies or something like that. Or you might have travel and meals and entertainment travel, which has this, a large amount in it, which are kind of red flags if you report that on a Schedule C because it looks it's going to look ballooned. It's going to look bloated compared to other businesses possibly that are in the same industry that you are in, which are the kind of things that, that uh, might, you know, re result in audits and whatnot. And they're going to be like, what are you, what are you doing putting Disneyland in travel here? Did you, did you, as, as a bookkeeper, did you have to go to Disneyland in order to, in order to do the, you know, you get the, you get that kind of thing. So let's open up our trial balance and uh, I'm going to duplicate the tap. It won't let me duplicate. Hold on a sec. I'm going to, Go to the tab to the left. Let's go to the reports. I'm going to type in trial balance. And then this is where we stand. So I just think it's useful to look at the trial balance from time uh, to time. So this is, we're kind of constructing things in terms of the bare bone construction as we go, as we do the data input with the bank feed 